Whiny liberals and lazy teachers always cry for more and more funding for education. It's never enough. Never, never enough. Lucky for us, one brave state refuses to be held hostages by such demands. We sent our citizen journalist, Laura Gray, to dig a little deeper. The Oklahoma school system is going broke. Oklahoma is in the midst of an educational crisis of historic proportions. School districts look to save cash. 97 have gone to a four-day week. This year, the state cut $34 million in education funding. Critics say that's in part due to years of giving tax breaks to oil companies. The shame stream media likes to blame tax breaks to oil companies. But we've seen this before, and we all know who's the real enemy. It's time to change the way teachers are evaluated, no more passes. They're being paid very well. And it's a part-time job. Yes, maybe it's the teachers who drain education funds in the form of a weekly handout they call a paycheck. So I'm headed to one who is literally looking for handouts, Teresa Danks. A teacher on the side of the road, panhandling, collecting money to buy school supplies for her class. <laughs> I'm going to confront this hobo teacher. I made a sign to try to send a message to the public about the situation that Oklahoma schools are in. What's the situation? In this state, we just had another $10 million budget cut to our public schools, and we were already at the bottom of the barrel. How much is your salary? I make a little under $35,000 a year. Depending on the year, I've spent two, $3,000 out of my own pocket, and there's teachers across America doing the same thing. Can I just ask, if you wanted to have money for school supplies, why did you take such a low-paying job? Gotcha, a woman who works with kids 60 hours a week. Teresa insists that underfunding public schools led to a supply shortage. I'm gonna fact check her against the most reliable source I know, children. How many school supplies do you have? About 10 or 20. Uh, like a bunch. Do you have enough school supplies? No, um, yeah. I'm yes. getting a lot of different messages from you right now. Yes. You do. I even got more than I had than I needed. Wow. See, kids don't lie. They have enough supplies. And guess what? Oklahoma teachers do too. Turns out someone's been giving them free stuff. We received uh, a box that we can use in the classroom. I'm just amazed that we get something that's free that is this great. But who is this selfless group of people called the OERB? I sat down with State Representative Mickey Dollins to find out. Oklahoma Energy Resources Board. It's a group that is funded by the oil and gas industry. Great! Big oil is putting themselves in kids' classrooms. Nothing wrong with that. OERB's educational material is very one-sided. One thing you will not find in the OERB curriculum is any perspectives on climate change. And it's indoctrinating kids to only see one side of the story when it comes to Oklahoma's energy options. Uh, looks like OERB delivers school supplies. And in return, they're simply asking teachers to use their curriculum to teach things like the importance of fracking, oil refining, how to liquefy petroleum gas. You know, kid stuff. If a company were to go into your school and fund a curriculum, uh, that uh, curriculum would be highly likely to favor their industry. But couldn't this solve your budget problem if you just had more corporations come into schools? Like, you could have Big Soda sponsor free lunches. You could have Big Pharma sponsor, you know, nap time. Maybe have a Ritalin-sponsored pop quiz. You are teaching this curriculum to third graders, and that has no, no place in a third grade classroom and in any elementary classroom. Too bad, Mickey. OERB curriculum is in 95% of Oklahoma school districts. They even make these adorable children's books called Petro Pete's Big Bad Dream. In it, Petro Pete learns what a world would be like with no petroleum byproducts, no toothbrush, no soccer balls, no soft serve ice cream. Wait, is that real? Well, whatever it is, it's a total goddamn nightmare. And who reads this to kids? Oklahoma's lawmakers. I wouldn't condone reading Petro Pete to third graders. What does have a place in a third grade class? classroom. Hands-on materials, hands-on training, uh, reading, writing, arithmetic. Do we writing, really arithmetic. want so many hands on our children? Sure, big oil is getting millions of dollars in tax breaks and leaving climate change out of their super cool experiments. But you know what they're not getting? Thank yous. Who wants to write thank you cards? Me! For big oil, for big oil. I need to use Oklahoma's most precious resource. No, not the kids. Oil. I mean more oil. To thank Oklahoma's future. Big oil. Thank OERB for all they are doing in your schools. And what better messenger than their very own mascot, Petro Pete. They're gonna love it. Hi, how are you? 
Nice to meet you. I have some thank you cards for the OARB. Okay, we're gonna need permission for the camera. They were too busy, probably shaping the minds of our youth. So I'm heading to Oil's real home, the Capitol. The Oklahoma state government gave $216 million in tax breaks to Big Oil while cutting school aid funding by $214 million. But that's a lot of numbers. If you really want to see where their heart lies, all you have to do is look up. Phillips Petroleum, Halliburton, Conoco, they literally sponsored the building. I'm looking for any senators that voted against raising the education budget and pro-oil. Okay, they are all too modest to take credit. Did anybody in this hallway vote not to raise education? I got some thank you cards. But everyone should know who is responsible. 